What's the most calculated thing you've ever seen an animal do? A few years ago, there were a few slices of bread in the middle of the street for whatever reason. A crow kept flying down and treating themselves, but whenever they did, one of the neighborhood dogs came and chased them off. The crow tried about three times to eat in peace, but the dog chased it off every time. So the crow then decided to land a little bit away from the slices of bread and the dog ran towards it. The crow then flew off and landed about a meter away from where it just landed. The dog followed again. The crow repeated this until the dog was in a different street and then the crow came back and chowed down. When my big orange tabby cat wanted me up to feed him breakfast he got into the habit of coming into the bedroom and meowing loudly around 5am. I soon cured him of that by getting up and quietly locking him in the bathroom for an hour or so while I got some more sleep. Sure enough after a few times he stopped waking me up with those loud mirrors. But I found I still would wake up early for some unknown reason with the cat on the floor by my bed staring at me expecting breakfast. It wasn't until one morning when I woke up really early and was just lying in bed thinking of getting up when I heard the smallest meow you could ever hear just a little tiny kitten like Mew. He then waited a minute or two and then repeated. He basically did this non-stop at irregular intervals just within hearing range so I wouldn't know that he had woken me up. Smart cat. Kankan. There are these little ninja crows everywhere. Small and sleek. They take up posts on the sunbrellas. One per peak. So I'm listening to them squawk. Because birds. And I noticed they had a particular sound for food. If any one of them spotted open food or an open tray, they would make this little quark sound. And if they heard the quark, their peak neighbor would repeat it. And so forth until all the birds knew about it. They had another sound for carried food. These birds would organize their attacks based on where the food was in their little network. Open food was hit by one bird following another, each taking a piece until it was gone or somebody shoot them away. But the carried food, that was a two-parter. Some would swoop in low, facing the server, and of course, the server would tilt the tray back to protect it. That's when the flankers would hit, dropping from up high, to snag what they could while the server was distracted. Brilliant approach. And from what I could see, very effective. They got a little something almost every time. It was amazing to watch. I had no idea birds could coordinate and communicate like that. Sneaky bastards. Kept me entertained for hours. This happened back when I had roommates. We all met up at our house for a birthday party before going out for drinks. Someone brought over a box of 20 Taco Bell tacos. My roommate's dog feigned disinterest in it until everyone left so no one thought to put the almost untouched box of tacos out of her reach. I got back early to find the box still on the counter but the floor had an almost neatly stacked pile of wrappers. Each wrapper had a little pile of lettuce, cheese and tomatoes in the center of it. She had been carefully taking the tacos out one by one and was eating just the meat and soft shells. It was like she knew she'd be in less trouble if she didn't make a huge mess. Edit. Just remembered. At the same house. I'd take the dog for a walk sometimes and would always see broken walnut shells all over the road. Then I started noticing. Crows would drop the walnuts where a tire was likely to go over them in the road. Then they would hang out and wait for cars to go over them. They'd fly in and eat the nuts and leave the shell. I thought it was really smart. My GF has a rule that her dog is not allowed in the kitchen. Whenever he tries to break this rule she puts him on the carpet right outside the kitchen with a stern talking to. The second she turns her back he will slide one paw forward like two inches to barely touch the kitchen floor. Her dog is very passive aggressive. Kinda like his owner. Till crows will take over the world. We had a pot-bellied pig when I was young. Charlotte was fat and black and sassy as fuck. She'd take out our potato bag from the pantry, hide every potato from the bag around the house, and then just wait. For two months, we'd have her coming up to us with a potato in her mouth. Randomly. She wasn't scared or worried or anything. She'd let you take it away, but as soon as you had your hand on it, she'd turn her head ever so slightly and twist off a full mouthful of potato. She didn't have the leverage to eat them herself, so she'd hide them until she could get one of us to help. This was my dog. I was eating a bagel on the couch and he was sitting on the floor next to me, just tying me down. You could tell he wanted some. 
but I wasn't giving in to his cute persuasions. He calmly walks over the mudroom door and rings his bell that lets us know that he has to go to the bathroom. So I get off the couch, put my bagel on the coffee table and walk into the mudroom. Well between the time I got up and walked to the mudroom door, he ran around, back through the kitchen and had snagged my bagel off the table. I didn't even try to get it back from him. The slick bastard deserved his prize. I realized who was the smartest being in the house that day. This won't ever see the light of day, but a cricket rode around on my turtle's back for over 24 hours. If he's that smart, the cricket deserves to live, we set him free to propagate his genes. I used to find dead mice in my dog's water bowl. I couldn't figure out why these stupid mice kept drowning themselves. Then, one day, I was watching my dog stalking a mouse on the back porch. She caught it in her teeth brought it to the water bowl, and held it underwater with her teeth until it drowned. Walked away like it was nothing. Scariest thing I've ever seen. There was a flock of little birds outside of a French bakery in California. They would pick up bits of scones and croissants people threw away in the trash cans nearby, and many of them would approach people for scraps. We noticed one particular bird hopping around on one leg begging for scraps, and we gave it a little bit of our bread. As soon as it had the bit of food in its beak, I swear to god it looked right at me and dropped its other leg to the ground. My horse knows how to unlock gates with his nose. Most of the stalls have a slide lock that they usually just leave alone, not Rex. We had to put a bottom lock on the door he couldn't reach. One day one of the newer people locked him in his stall but forgot the bottom latch, then walked away. Rex unlocked his door and then went to the other stalls and let the other horses out. Then he led them on a charge to grassy freedom. My cat likes laser toys. We kept him entertained with one for several months. When we moved we lost it, but then after a couple months we found it. Almost immediately after shining a bright red spot on the carpet, he looked at the person holding the laser pointer, and now all he wants to do is bite the actual lasso -like thing, not the spot. We used to have two kittens. One day at the dinner table one of them stood up and put two paws on my dad's lap. We all laughed at her obvious attempt at trying to steal food. While our attention was focused on her, her sister jumped straight onto the table and stole a whole chicken drumstick. They both sprinted away and shared it nearby. We were all impressed. I was once walking from my grandparents house to the shops and accidentally went the very long way, which happened to go past a creek. There may have been more water I couldn't see, and park where ducks like to live. I saw two ducks walk towards the road, and at the edge, one duck put its wing in front of the other duck to stop it, looked both ways and waited for a car to pass, walked to the center line of the road with the other duck, and repeated, I have never regretted not bringing my camera more. Each time the doorbell rang, my cat would run and hide behind the furniture next to the door, slip out the door as soon as I opened it and run straight for a small hole under the fence where she knew I couldn't catch her. She'd be back after a couple hours of being an outdoor wildcat. When I was about 11 or 12 years old I was with my family on a beach. There was a seagull there that had stolen a sandwich from our beach blanket. It had grabbed the sandwich, flew away, and landed about 100 feet from us. So I picked up a racquetball and tried to hit the seagull with it. I missed, but was close enough to startle the seagull. It flew into the air, swooped back down, picked up the ball, and proceeded to drop it like 200 yards out at sea. I had a cat, who has since passed off natural causes, that was ridiculously smart. He was allowed outdoors but always slept inside at night. We had recently found some abandoned kittens which we fed, and they made a home in our backyard. One night our indoor cat came up to my room meowing incessantly and left, so I ignored him. He came back again a couple of minutes later and then left, so again I'll let him be. The third time he did this I decided to follow him and he led me to the sliding glass back door and just stood there. I turned on the light and looked outside and these poor kittens were cornered by some raccoons. The confrontation had not become physical yet, thankfully, and I managed to scare the raccoons away. I am still amazed to this day by some of the things this cat did. We once came home to find my dog had ripped into a multi-pack of mini chocolate bars and sweets and gone to town on them. 
However, we couldn't bring ourselves to tell him off because he'd also placed an unopened chocolate on my bed, my sister's bed and my parents' bed. I guess he thought if he shared the chocolate with us all we wouldn't be mad. The video of a crow flying up to some random guy and saying fuck you. My oldest cat likes to torture insects. She catches them, brings them to the center of the kitchen and gives them a head start. She then hunts them down and brings them back. Then she'll remove a limb and repeats. She does this until they give up or die. My dog once outsmarted me. He tricked me into getting up to let him out on a cold winter morning. Only as soon as I turned the corner he jumped up into my warm spot in the bed. Curled up tight. And then studiously ignored me when I came back in the room. That jackass. Best dog ever. My dog pooped in an ex-girlfriend's shoe. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe.